Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create falling rocks using tie flow. So before we start, there's a couple of things we need to do. And firstly, that is to download the tie flow plugin from the link displayed below and place it into the 3ds max plugins files, plugins folder, which will also be shown on the screen below as well. And then once that's done, we configure the file using the customer within customize and the plugin manager before we get started. So once that's all done, we can get started by clicking on create. And then we select our tie flow object and then we just simply plonk it onto the screen. And then in order to get in order to get it going, there's a couple of things that we need to do first. So once we're in there, this is the tie flow modifier manual menu. So we've got several different things. So we can change like time frames, enable disabled, catch, etc. So what we want to do is we're going to make sure we want to have it enabled and our time step set to frame and scale to 1.0. And then also we need to sort change the physics default gravity value just to one, just to minus one. And yeah, once that's set, we can get set, we can get going. And then that way what we do is, once that's done, we click on our open editor button. And this will bring up the tie flow editor GUI. So, so this is where all the magic happens. So as you can see, we've got a whole different range of different atom physics, physics sets that we can use. So birth, array, flock, fluid force, object bind, cloth bind, modify separators. So you can either just scroll across here and then all you can select them from the different tabs. So they divide up into different color coded categories. Yes, but for us today, we'll just be focusing on a basic pre-made template. So in order to do that, we right click on the, on the um, panel here select preset flows and then simple physics flow and as you can see we've we've generated our physics set or event set or rather which is made up of six different categories so first of all there's a birth we've got position icon shape physics shape box mesh and then display so firstly we want to adjust the birth rate from one so from zero start to 500 end with a total of 500. So this will control how many rocks or we've got. So as you can see, I've adjusted the rate and now that's appeared on the screen. Secondly, we want to adjust our icon. Well, there's the icon. If you need to sort of readjust it, like if you want to move it up or down. So, well, I'll play around with that in a couple of minutes so we can go through it. I'll show you how to do that. Secondly, there's shape. We, so the first, second thing on our agenda is we want to adjust the shape. So we've got a whole different type array of shapes that we can choose from, both 2D and 3D. So for us, we, we're going to just go for the stones since we're working with rocks. And then we adjust our physics shape hall from box to spear. And then our display geometry and color to yellow by clicking the little circle. So we want to make them cream, sort of a creamy color. Yep. And that's pretty much done. So once that's all there, we can sort of play around. So in order to have them falling at the moment, we've got to do add another and add, add another tab because as you can see at the moment they're just compounding, compounding on the icon, and then spreading across. So in order to make them fall, we need to click new to create a new tab. As you can see, I brought up a new tab. 
on the screen. So blank canvas. So and then we copy our event from event set from number one and then paste it into number two. And like simple easy as flo easy as flim, we've got we just move the keyframe slider across, so we're pretty much moving. So as you can see on the screen, there's two type flow icons, and then there's two. There should be two, well, two type flow objects, and then two type flow icons driving it. So as you can see, I've basically created up. So they're all compounding at the top like popcorn, and then falling down, and then falling bit by bit. So we can do that, or. But for our purpose today, we want to just delete num what's in number one, just to create infinite falling, f just spontaneous fall, falling from a spontaneous location. So we just delete the first one, or actually we can disable it. Yeah, we'll disable it. So to disable, we click on this little light globe here at the top of the panel, and that will disable. The event. So as you can see on the screen now, we're pretty much got falling rocks. So if you want, you can just play around with it, see how you go with it. You can, or you can adjust it depending on what what you prefer. So if I want, I can actually adjust the amount to make it a thousand didn't make any difference yes yeah, so thousand pretty much and then once that's done we can record it. There is an option to record it. And that is simply by clicking on the tools menu. And then going down to preview, grab viewport, and then create type preview. And then what we do is we make sure our camera is set as perspective. Our appearance is high quality. And then our resolution to a custom resolution of 1920 by 1080 and then what we do is and then for our output we can create an image sequence or an mp4 sequence so an image sequence is basically just still frames made up of jpegs or pngs and then an mp4 is an actual video so what we need to do is we need to copy and paste the location up into the top thing there and it will display and then the final and then the final output to confirm will be displayed down the bottom there so once happy and set we can create, click on create preview and it will go through the frames as it would in the video and there you go that's how you create falling rocks. So the next part of the video will be the will show, show you how to download and install. Just install the actual plugin, as I mentioned at the start of the video. So I hope you enjoy it. See you in the next part. Okay, just adding on to the previous video about how to make how to generate falling rocks using tie flow you i'm not too sure if you noticed in the video that the simulation was speed was a bit too sped up so in order to adjust it so as you can see what we'll do is I'll, what you do is to adjust the time we click on this little button here and then we can set the speed so by default it's set to one times 
which is basically that at the moment, which is what you see on the screen at the moment. However, if you want to slow it down to let's say half or a quarter, we can sort of we can click one of those two and end. And we can just, as you can see, so this is at a quarter of the speed now, so it's a lot more noticeable. But the main point of the video is to show you how to do, how to install the 3DS, the TieFly plugin into 3DS Max. So what we do is we go to the TieFly website. Get, click on get tie flow and then download the free version as you can see which will give you 25 modifiers and it's a full suite sweet so once that's downloaded as a zip zip file unzip it and then place the Flow folder into the 3ds max plugin folder which for me is located in my D drive as you can see and so once unzipped plug it in just paste the DLI file from the 3ds from the tie flow folder into the plugins folder I will post I will post the link of link down below for both the link for both the file and the the file and the actual um, website even though I've already mentioned it in the previous part and then once and once pasted in, all we're going to do is just go into Customize and Plugin Manager and select Plugin Manager. And I think Typeflow, actually not Plugin Manager. Configure User and System Paths. So it's Customize and then Configure User and System Paths. And then once we're in configure user and system paths, we just click on additional 3ds Max plugins and then we just select our folder. Which will then basically add in the add in the different plugins that we have loaded within our 3ds Max folder. And then once that's all done, we just basically close 3ds Max and then restart it, and then TieFlow should be installed. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial on how to use TieFlow. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial.